What's going on guys, John Elder here from CodingMe.com and in this video, I'm going to show you how to do one-sided padding with Kinter and Python. Alright guys, like I said, in this video we're going to look at one-sided padding, but before we get started, if you like this video and want to see more like it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out CodingMe.com where I have dozens of courses with hundreds of videos that teach you to code. Use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 off membership. That's all my courses, videos, and books for one time fee at just $49, which is insanely cheap. Okay, like I said, in this video, we're going to look at padding on a single side. And if you've been watching these videos for a while, you see that almost in every video I do pad Y equals 20 to push it down the screen a little bit. What you may or not may not realize is when I do that, it puts 20 pixels of padding above and below. And there are certain times when you only might want padding above and no padding below or padding below and no padding above or padding on the left and not on the right or padding on the right and not on the left. And that's what we're going to look at in this video. And it's really, really simple, but it's pretty important for overall design of your app. So let's head back over to our code. I've got a file called pad.py, got the basic Kinter starter code that we always have. I'm using the Sublime Text Editor and the Git Bash terminal as always. So. Let's start out by changing the color of our app just so it's easier to see these changes that we're about to make. So I'm going to go root.config and let's set the BG to, I don't know, just blue or something. So that'll work. So let's create a label and I'm going to call this my underscore label. And this is a label. We want to put it in root. We want the text to equal hello world, whatever. And let's make the background color of this white. And let's make the foreground color, the text color, make sure that's black. And let's give this a font equals Helvetica and like size 20 to really push it down the screen. So I'll put all this on separate lines so it's easier to read. So now we can my underscore label dot pack and let's give this a pad Y of 20 like we usually do. So let's go ahead and save this and run it real quick just to make sure that looks okay. So let's go Python pad dot pi. And we can see we've got 20 pixels above and 20 below. Now we can't really tell if there's 20 pixels below. So let's go ahead and create a second label so that we have a point of reference. So I'm just going to copy all of this stuff. And let's say create a second label. I'm going to call this my label two and my label two dot pack. And this will be hello world two <laughs> and same deal. Find a background of white foreground of black. And instead of packing this pad Y 20, let's just put nothing at all. So let's go ahead and save this and run it just to see what this is. All right. So we've got 20 above and 20 below. So that's what pad Y does for this label, right? So we may, for instance, only want padding above here and not below here. So one thing I am going to do, I'm going to change this from pad Y to 20 to 50. Let's really push this down the screen because because it's kind of annoying. Okay, so now we can really tell this is 50 pixels above and 50 below. So we've got a big gap there. So all right, let's get rid of this gap below. How do we do that? Well, we can come back over here and this right here pad Y and pad X for that matter, they they take a, an integer like this, say 50. And that'll that'll put 50 above and 50 below. We already understand that. But it'll also take a tuple. And here you can pass two different things. So 50 and zero, for instance, if we save this and ran it, you see it's only putting 50 above and zero below. So that's really, really cool. We could do the opposite if we wanted to, we could put um, zero above and 50 below. So this will put it right up to the top of the screen. As you can see, no padding above and 50 below. So really, really easy, just use a tuple. And uh, that's all there is to it. Now we can do the same thing with pad X. So left and right, right? Pad Y is up and down, pad X is left and right. So let's switch this from pack to grid so that we can have them side by side, right? So let's go grid and let's get rid of this and let's go row equals zero, column equals zero. And we're just gonna copy this and let's put column equals one here. Let's save this and run it, see what we got here. So here they're packed right up or they're gridded right up next to each other. There's no pad X at all. So if we close this and change this guy, let's see our first one to 
to, let's say, pad. Well, first, let's give this a pad Y of 50 just to really push it down the screen. And let's give this a pad X of, let's say, also 50. So let's just run this to see what this looks like. So now it's down the screen with the pad Y, but you can see the pad X is 50 on this side and 50 on this side, right? So, okay, maybe we wanna get rid of this gap here. We just want the 50 right here. Same exact thing. We can just, let's see, where we go? Put these on separate lines here so that we can start to read this better. So the pad X 50, instead we can use a tuple. Let's go 50 and zero. Save this, run it. And now we get 50 on the left, nothing on the right, and very cool. And of course we can switch this around too, so we can go zero and 50. And you can do any numbers in here that you want, obviously. I'm just using 50 because it's easy to see. So here we have zero on the left and 50 on the right. So that's all there is to it. So this is a pretty boring video, obviously, but this is important, right? So anytime you're doing GUI design and you need to place things precisely, you very often only need to pad a certain side and you can use a tuple to pass in the exact padding that you want on the exact side that you want using pad Y and pad X with the tuple. And it's just that easy. So that's all for this video. If you liked it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm and check out codemy.com where you can use coupon code YouTube one to get $30 off membership. So pay just $49 to access all my courses, over 47 courses, hundreds of videos and the PDFs of all my best selling coding books. Join over 100,000 students learning to code just like you. My name is John Elder from Codeby.com, and I'll see you in the next video.